Hi everyone, welcome to our sermon this week at the Newberry Town Church of God. It's a little bit different again uh, because of some concerns. We're not able to meet in person this week, but we look forward to a time really soon when all the health concerns would allow us to do so. Until then, we're so glad that you're viewing this and taking the time. It doesn't replace the time we can get together, but we're so glad that you're taking the time to listen to this and to meditate on the message of God's Word. If you have your Bibles at home, I'm going to be reading two uh, different passages uh, this, this morning. One is from John chapter 1, and the other is from Matthew in the chapter 4. John 1, verse 4, from the New Living Translation reads, In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness did not comprehend it. Matthew 4, 16 and 17. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And upon those who sat in the region, the shadow of death, light has dawned. From that time, Jesus began to preach and say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. May God add the blessing to the reading of his holy and perfect word. Now, there are some areas of my life that I'd rather not people look at. Some of those areas are just kind of silly things. Uh, for example, if you ask my wife, Michelle, one of the things I have a bad habit of doing is that I like to eat a bowl of cereal before bed. And uh, many times I just set down that bowl uh, down beside me and I forget to take it and, and put it in the sink before I fall asleep. Um, I do my best to try to remember to do that, but sometimes I forget. And I'm really embarrassed to, to admit that. I don't like sharing those things. Sometimes when I get home, I like to take off my socks and I, I put them beside my shoes so that later when I get on my treadmill, I, I walk a little bit and I intend to put those same socks back on. But sometimes I get new socks and I forget about those socks and I leave them. So if you were to stop by my house some evening or something, I would look over there and make sure I didn't leave some socks laying out or something. Those things are embarrassing, but I know that I'm not the only one in that boat, that we all have those idiosyncrasies, bad habits, if you will. And some of those things are small and trivial like that, but some of them are, are pretty important. We have uh, bad scenes and, and embarrassing things that we've done, very serious things. Some of them uh, maybe even too embarrassing for us wanting to talk about in public. But we know that God continues to work in and through our lives to bring healing and restoration in those ways. And so, uh, whenever you're watching this, I think that maybe some of you have been a follower of Jesus for a really long time. And, and, and maybe some of you are, are kind of new. And you're still just trying to learn what all that means and entails. But for every one of us, I know for sure that there are parts of our lives that we would rather not someone examine with a microscope. Maybe it's some attitude that we have towards someone, some grudge that we hold, some sense where we think we're better than someone else. Maybe it's some area where we're not always honest, whether that's at work or at home or some relationships. Maybe it's some secret sin that we have and we think, well, no one knows. And you've managed to somehow convince yourself that maybe even God doesn't know. Or, or if he does, you don't like to think about him knowing about that secret sin. Or maybe we make an excuse about those sins and we think, is it really that bad? Is it really so bad if I have just one little sin that I, I keep to myself? Besides, the sin isn't really hurting anyone, is it? At least, not anyone but me, we say to ourselves. But that's not true, is it? It's not true. Because sin always hurts God. Because sin is in its, apparent, is in its essence a way of, of separating us from God, that disobeying God creates in us a, a barrier in our lives. So when we talk about Jesus and we understand that he is the, the light of this world, it is uh, joyful to understand that light bringing out uh, into our lives. It is a blessing, but sometimes in the short term, it doesn't always feel that way, does it? Because the light reveals what is hidden. And sometimes... As human beings, there are things in our lives we want to keep hidden. But the reality is there is nothing, nothing that is hidden from God or His Son, Jesus Christ. And when you try to hide something from God, it's, it's foolish. 
it's not always comfortable to invite God in, to bring him into some area of our lives that need that light to shine in, but we need God to do that. Because in him shining that light, we're able to understand that he can change us. Sometimes we're, we're too prideful that we don't want him to shine that light. Sometimes we're too arrogant. Sometimes we're, we're too ashamed. And sometimes we think that deep down inside, even if God himself showed me this thing that I can't change, I'm just going to keep sinning in the same way. But the truth is that if we're open and we're honest to God, he has the ability to change us, to transform us. He will change us because that, my friends, is who God is. Sometimes when we, we look at Advent and we know that this is the season that we celebrate Jesus coming, we look at that broader context, we understand that it's a dark time and like we live in right now. I know many people have told me what a, a dark time it feels like we are living in with all of this viruses and uh, tension and just stress and panic and hurt and fear. But the time in which Jesus was born was a very dark time known as the, uh, the period in between the Testaments, from that of the Old Testament to the New Testament, which lasted about 400 years, a period of time in which many scholars believe that God himself had really stopped communicating with his people. There hadn't been any real new prophets to communicate with them, to chastise them, to encourage them, to tell them uh, uh, what to do. And that there were many who were teaching that such ideas were the things of the past, that God was silent that he was too busy or uninvolved or apathetic to deal with them. Add to that that the Romans moved in, maybe the most powerful and one of the crueler empires that the world had ever known. And they brought with them various levels of oppression. And one of the worst is that was when they had conquered uh, Jerusalem, uh, slaughtering a pig in the temple, on the altar, on the Holy of Holies, desecrating and then feeding pork to the families and forcing them to eat it. And if they refused, they were executed, beginning with the youngest up to the oldest. How would we like to have lived in such a day as that? How it would have been so easy to question God. Why would God allow this? Why is this happening? I never thought I would live to see such a day as this, this day of evil. Many were hurting and unsure and, and confused about what the future would bring. But a group arose to fight the Romans, called the, the Maccabees, and they regained control of Jerusalem. And that's actually why people worship at Hanukkah. It's the story that, 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 that people celebrate. But as so often the case, power corrupts and very quickly those who were put in charge began to make deals with the Romans that benefited them. Selling off offices and powerful positions for money and power. So if you were alive during these times, this, those dark times, a time of despair, of oppression where the thumb of the world's most powerful empire was bearing down on you. That even your own leaders were corrupt. It's against that backdrop that Jesus Christ was born. Is it any wonder that so many at Jesus' day, such as the Pharisees, were so rigid in their attitudes? We've probably met people that are quite rigid as well. I know that I have. Sometimes they've had hard upbringings. Life has been hard circumstances to deal with. Maybe that describes your life to a certain degree. See, when people have to grow up and they feel like they're living in survival mode, it, it makes them hard. It makes them rigid. It makes them lack compassion. And Jesus came to, to penetrate such attitudes. That's why in our passage here uh, in, in John, we're told that the darkness could not comprehend Jesus. Couldn't understand him. It was, it was a foreign idea. The darkness cannot understand the systems and ways of this world. It cannot comprehend the ways of God because it is beyond the ability of them to understand. You see, when someone lives in darkness, they become accustomed to the way that people live around them, taking advantage of them, looking to use them, 
looking out for themselves. It's, it's impossible to understand that someone, that God himself actually uh, loves them because they're always waiting for the other foot to drop. They're always waiting for the, for the catch. And maybe that's a hurdle for you. Maybe that's the way you relate to God, that you feel like God is, he's driving a bargain here. And as long as you're on your best behavior, God's going to care about you. But his love is just like the love of this world. It's conditional and it's selfish. And God will love you, yeah, until he doesn't. Until you mess up, until you tick him off, until you do something he doesn't like. Then God will discard you, throw you to the side like trash, just like everyone else has. And so people have this idea that the light of the world that Jesus came to bring is to, to shine on their lives, to expose all the sin so that they feel ashamed of who they are. That's not why Jesus came. He didn't come so that he could use your secrets against you. He came to liberate you and free you and transform you. He came that you would have life and life abundant. In order to understand this light, we have to really understand the darkness. See, I, I grew up in the mountains, and it was dark. I tell you, at night, it, 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 it got dark. It was really, really dark. And my mom would say, go out and um, shut the chicken house door after dark. And I'd look outside, and I did not want to do it. I couldn't see the hand. Like, if I held it out this far, I had a hard time seeing my hand. And, and, and the chicken house is a football field or more away. And when you live in the mountains and nights, there are all kinds of weird sounds and snapping branches and stuff all around. I didn't like going out in the dark because I couldn't see very far. And that's the same thing that happens in our spiritual lives. See, we're walking in darkness and we can't, we can't see very far, my friends. And when we can't see far, we stop caring about what's way out there. We just live in this moment. We live in our emotional response to what is present in this second. We don't care about some future reality, the consequences of what this moment might feel like. And see, we live in a culture where people walking in darkness, they don't care about anything but this moment, how they feel in this moment. And we fail to see the ramifications for our lives. If we just do what feels good and try to avoid what feels bad. And then when people live in darkness, they actually get this really crazy, crazy idea that what they want to do is avoid the light, that they're more comfortable in the dark. It's better to stay here. It's better to be safe. See, the light's going to expose me. It's so short-sighted, my friends. You see... And we look at our lives and, and we look around and so often it, it's easy to pinpoint the darkness in other people, less so in ourselves. We look and we look at someone's life and we say, how come they keep doing this stupid stuff over and over again? I don't understand. How aren't they seeing it? They just keep repeating the same mistake over and over and over again. And yet the truth is that for many of us, we make many of the same mistakes, our pet little sins, over and over and over again. And this leads us to live lives of, of highs and lows. One day we're, we're high as a kite and everything's going great because that's what our emotions say. And, and, and next week we feel like, I just want to end it all. I'm suicidal. I don't even want to be here. And it causes us to get angry and cold and hard and fill our lives with fear and anxiety. But what Jesus wants, my friends, is he wants to take that light of the world and he wants to shine it into the deepest, darkest caverns of who you are to free you from this emotional yo-yo that you're on. That he wants to, to bring light. And when he brings light, yeah, it's, it can be scary at first. Yeah, at first. But what he's offering is peace and joy. But peace and joy come at the end of a process that starts out, can be kind of scary, friends. To have real joy, to have authentic peace in our lives is, is illustrated as Jesus illuminates our lives. Because once we see something, 
We can allow him to change it. We can, we can repent. We can see restoration. See, the light comes in. And in that moment, I look at myself in the mirror and I see my flaws. I see my weaknesses. I see all of my smallness. And in that moment, that doesn't feel like joy to me, at least at first. But then I understand. When I understand that what repentance is, is that God wants to help me overcome those things. He wants to fix the flaws in me to be who He intended for me to be. And He wants to do that for you. He wants to do that for every single one of us. See, that's what our second passage is about today uh, from the Gospel of Matthew in the fourth chapter. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light and upon those who sat in the region of the shadow of death, light has dawned. And from that time, Jesus began to preach, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's what the kingdom of heaven is about. The light coming and exposing us. And in that moment to call to repent, repentance comes um, from two words. Here in the Greek, the first meta meaning after, neo meaning knowledge. So it literally means that after you acquire some degree of knowledge, you know something and that causes you to change course. You touch a hot stove. Ow! I don't want to do that again. I'm going to stop doing that. I'm going to turn around. I'm going to do the opposite of that. You see, once you learn something, that changes you. And when you know who Jesus is, it changes you. It transforms you. It makes you a new person. See, that knowledge only comes as we allow Jesus to shine that light in to whatever area of darkness we have, whatever part of us that we've denied Jesus. He wants to come in and say, there's no part of me off limits because what you're holding back is hurting you. And it's hurting how I want to use you. And it's hurting the, what I want to bless and do in other people's lives through you. So you need to turn it over to me. I look at uh, Psalm chapter 9, 119, 105 says, your word is a lamp to my feet, a light to my path. And later in verse 130, it says, the entrance of your words gives light. He gives understanding to the simple. Oh, I'm simple. I need understanding. His light gives understanding to me. It is a lamp to my feet when I, I couldn't see where to go. How I wish I had that lamp when I was going out to feed those chickens so I could see where I would go, where I could see where the path was. You see, God's light, it pierces through that darkness. It comes through us by, by reading His Word by being obedient to the Holy Spirit, um, by conversations with trusted Christian friends. And yeah, I said Christian friends because they're brothers and sisters in Christ and they want what's best for you. So many times we talk to people that aren't Christians and you know, a lot of people just gonna tell you what you wanna hear. And they're the people you're gonna ask. Just gonna parrot back to you what you already wanted them to say. But a Christian brother and sister, they care about the truth and they care about the true you. And they want to tell you what that truth is in love so that you're obedient to God. You see, the truth is that in the darkness, we all have to us whispered lies, moments of self-doubt where Satan comes up and he, and he whispers in our ears. How many times I might have felt that way? You know, you're going to get up and give a sermon and you think the old devil reaches in that bag of lies and he, why would you even talk about this topic? Boring. I hope you're ready for everyone to fall asleep tomorrow. Glad you wasted 15 hours preparing this. And then I have to realize it's not about me. It's not about you either. It's about each one of us being obedient to do what God has asked us to do. Whatever he's laid on your heart, whatever he's directed you to do, do that. Do what God wants. And how other people are going to react is how they're going to react. And most of the time, it's a lie from Satan. You just obey God and all the chips will lie as God would want. See, we all have those self-doubts, but God helps us to overcome them. 
You see, that, that searchlight that he, he, he's bowing down isn't to, to find those sins so that he can just rub our face in it like a dog that made a mess on the carpet. No. Instead, it's like, as John 3.17 says, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. God shines his light onto the world not to condemn the world. Friends, the world was already condemned. You and I were condemned. He didn't shine that light so we can all look at my faults, see my sin, my blemishes, my shortcomings. They were already there. You just couldn't see them because of the darkness. The light shows you the truth. And when that light shines, shines. It allows us to see that. And in that moment, we make a choice. Mm, continue on status quo. Or say, wow, God, help me, transform me, cleanse me. Help me to see the things where I fall short. Help me to trust you that you'll change me. Allow the light of Christ into your life this Advent, this, this Christmas season. There should be no place of darkness in a Christian's life, no place where we don't let God examine us. Instead, help us to serve God. Let Him in. Let Him see every single aspect of who you are. You can't hide it from God, so stop trying. So, friends, today we can decide. I'm gonna keep on doing the same thing I've always done. It's up to you. Or, and what I hope you choose, is to humble yourself. That we all humble ourselves and say, God, I, I'm not perfect. There are places in my life that I've tried to hide from you. Places of darkness. But I want your light to shine. And in those moments, sometimes I might feel embarrassed. Sometimes I might feel afraid. Sometimes I might not want this to close. Sometimes da 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 all these things. 